Hi, this is Shruti again, and now I'll be taking you through our analytics and insights capabilities. We've recently released a lot of new analytics features that I'm excited to share with you. Let's start with trends. Let's take a simple event trend, a purchased or charged trend line. Out of the box, a few different views for your analysis are provided. View the number of purchases made during that period in the event count tab. View the number of unique users that made a purchase in the unique user tab. Events per user gives you the average number of purchases made per user over that time period. Active percentage shows the percentage of active users that have made a purchase. Building on top of the trends that we just saw, additional events can now be included in the analysis. View side-by-side -side comparison of event trend lines in a single view. For example, comparing the trends of two events like product viewed and purchased can be easily accomplished to see whether there are any correlations between the two. Drilling down on events is also possible. For example, viewing the trend of product views split by categories can be accomplished by selecting the split by link and selecting an event property here, say category, and view the trend. The new chart will show you the products viewed trend line broken up by its various product categories. Distinguishing which product categories are viewed more than others can now be gauged and decisions can be made based upon them. Now that was a drill down on event property. User property can also be shown in greater detail. For instance, understanding the type of customers that are viewing products can be done by splitting the trend by user property, say customer type, to see the patterns broken down by the different customer types. Here, gold, silver, platinum, etc. Summarization of event properties can also be done by trends. This can be useful when tracking revenue trends by summarizing the amount of products purchased over time, for example. Average amounts over time can also be viewed by changing the view dropdown. By splitting this by user property, deeper understanding of revenue trends by each customer type can be shown. Now, what if there are different metrics that are unique to a certain business or are calculated differently? Creating these custom formulas can now be done in the formulas tab. For example, calculating the revenue per unique customer can now be done with a formula. Enter prop sum of A divided by uniques of A to the formula line and click apply. The results will display the values from the formulas created. There are different functions that can be used to create formulas. Event level functions like totals, uniques, average and active. Property level functions like prop sum and prop average. And standard operators like parentheses, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division can also be used to combine functions into custom formulas. Now let's look at funnels. Funnels show how users progress through different paths within the app and pinpoint where they drop off between steps. Let's create a funnel with three steps. App launched, product viewed, and charge repurchased. I can easily compare the funnel chart that I just created across different segments to show how their conversion rates compare. I can do this with save segments or compare an ad hoc segment that I define. Let's choose frequent buyers, save segment, and compare them to all the users and see how they fare. The funnel analysis will also show me how the median times differ between segments, answering the question on how much faster my frequent buyers convert versus the rate of all users. Conversions can also now be based on event property. By holding an event property constant, it will determine if the conversion was done for the intended item or not. For example, if a consumer added a shirt to cart but purchases something else, it would be considered a drop-off if the whole property constant was checked. One of the benefits of having an integrated analytics and engagement platform is its actionability. Actionable funnels is a feature that allows creation of segments or campaigns based on users from a funnel. Simply click on the chart and choose to create a segment or campaign. Engaging with segments who did or didn't do an activity can be done without leaving the screen or redoing the query. Now let's click on the frequency tab and take a look at the frequency chart. The frequency chart displays the frequency of a user action from the current step to the next. In this example, we can determine that 17.47% of users are viewing the product twice before purchasing. 
This value can give an indication on whether that stage needs to be optimized. Let's take a look at retention through our cohort analysis. Cohort analysis tracks user behavior by grouping users that have the same behavior and tracking their usage over time. Here in this example, we identify both the first and return event as product view. Clevertap offers multiple retention modes. End the day shows the user actions on specific days. For example, a user views a product on week one and returns on week three to view a product again. An unbounded retention cohort shows user retention over a time period, but more importantly, it measures if the users return after a given point in time. Following the previous example, the unbounded cohort shows users returning to view a product at any point after week one and not returning specifically on week three. A third type is the power user curve. This retention mode analyzes the frequency of users who did the return event in a given time period. In this example, we can see that only 14.2% of users did the return event in two distinct weeks. For each cohort trend, there are five levels of retention frequencies provided. Aside from hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly, a custom bracket is also available. The custom bracket retention broadens the definition of the retention bracket to include unique retention values. For example, you can see the retention for days 0 to 7, 8 to 30, and 31 to 90. For each cohort trend, the default retention metric is the percentage of returning users. Other retention metrics available are the return event metric that shows the retention by the total of return events. Events per user that shows the average number of times users view a product, for example. Custom metric shows the retention curve from an event property perspective, for example, the amount purchased or revenue generated when users return. Now let's take a look at schema. Schema empowers businesses to better manage and control data within the Clevertap platform. Data integrity is critical for accurately interpreting behavioral analytics and effectively engaging with campaigns. Within the schema, teams can make decisions about data handling, define how data is ingested, and define events and event properties and user properties. These are the core data types that are essential to make sure data is clean and accurate at all times. Schema automatically discards undefined events or highlights them as errors based on how it's set up and the error stream reviews the schema rules and highlights data errors. Next, we move on to composite events. With composite events, users are able to create a new event composed of a combination of events and use it for analysis. Composite events are set up in the schema section of settings. Create a composite event by naming your event and selecting the events that will be grouped together. For example, I've created a composite event called viewed that consists of two child events, product viewed and category viewed. With the created event, an event property for the composite event can also be created to combine, say, the category from the two child events. Going forward, the viewed composite event can be used just like a regular event for all analysis. That's it for the analytics and insights demo.